Sisters and brothers, wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, be welcome. Thank you so much for joining with me here in my little corner of Galveston as we pray today. Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and hope to all people. Heavenly Father, may your name be glorified. May your kingdom be established. Holy, holy, holy are you, loving God. Heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Glory to you, O God. Hear this, O Israel. Our God is sovereign and singular. We shall love our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Our God alone shall we serve. Hear this, O Israel. We shall love our neighbors as ourselves. On these two great commandments hang all the law and the prophets too. O God, who shall dwell in your house, who shall rest upon your holy mountain? In purity of heart, let us stand before your altar, O Lord. Lord, who shall dwell in your house, who shall rest upon your holy mountain? Those who walk without spot, acting in righteousness. Those who speak truth in their heart and place no deceit on their tongue. In purity of heart, let us stand before your altar, O Lord, those who do no evil to their neighbor, and accept no bribe against the innocent, those who reject evil as worthless, but honor those who fear the Lord. In purity of heart, let us stand before your altar, O Lord, those who are faithful and just to their companions, and do not lend their money for gain, those who accept no bribe against the innocent, those who do these things are just, and nothing can ever disturb them. In purity of heart, let us stand before your altar, O Lord. O God, who shall dwell in your house, 
who shall rest upon your holy mountain. How beautiful and glorious is your house, O God! In purity of heart, let us stand before your altar, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Most high and glorious God, we give you thanks for the wonders of this day. We ask you, as always, to guard us, guide us, and bless us on our way. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Remember that when we gather, we do so with the whole church. Heaven and earth are joined in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We praise you, and we thank you, O Lord, our God and Savior, giver of life. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our prayers to you. You have promised that when two or three gather together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O God, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, everlasting life. For you are a good God and love humanity, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lift up your voices, give glory to our God, the Eternal Shepherd. Allah. Kadisha kahela tanna, kadisha lama yuta, etra heke male. Ai hos ho tehos, ai hos is kiros, ai hos atanatos. Eleisonimas, Santus Deus, Santus Fortis, Santus Immortalis, Miserere Nobis. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen and Amen. Holy God, Holy and Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Holy, glorious God, have mercy on us, always, according to your promise. Amen. Let us listen with our hearts to God's holy word. May the Holy Spirit teach us and guide us. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your government, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. 
I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, as Abel Menhola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Yehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have not ever heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there, alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. They cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The stories this morning are about faith. And faith is hard. Faith is scary. Faith is not knowing. Elijah, they're they're, they're after him. They're going to kill him. You know, they've turned over the worship to Baal. Don't worry, says God. I'm going to pass by. Come out and see. There is a hideous wind. There is tremendous earthquake. There is fire. 
and that's not where God is. Then comes the silence, and Elijah knows it's God. And God tells him, don't worry, you're going to go to this point. Paul tells us, you know, we were, we were all into the faith, we were all into the book, we were all into doing these things. And Jesus comes along and changes that. And now what we need to do is to believe in Jesus. To believe that God has sent us this change in our lives. It's not going to be about the rules anymore. It's going to be about our love, as Jesus has taught us. The disciples. I, I really get the disciples. <laughs> he says, go on, go, go out there. And they get out in the boat and they go off and, you know, then it's time for him to come out to them, and the boat's out there, and they can't get back to the back to the shore because the wind is against them. So he just goes out walking on the water. Yeah, that would freak me out too. I would look up and say, "Oh, a ghost! It's a creepy! It's a it, it, this this shouldn't be happening." Peter says, "If it's really you, tell me to come out to you. Come." So Peter gets out and he's walking on the water too. Faith, belief, love. And then Peter's much more like me. He's like, I am doing, no, oh, what is this whole, oh, the wind, oh, what it? And he starts to sink. <laughs> Lord, save me. And Jesus reaches down, grabs his hand, pulls him up, saves him, gets him back in the boat, and says, oh, you of little faith. That's where we all stand so much of our time. If we didn't, we would make those changes inside. But we're afraid. Faith requires us to believe in something outside of ourselves. Faith requires us to believe in Jesus. Faith requires us to step into the darkness. Step out onto that water. And our mind says, we can't stand on the water, or we're going to sink. And Jesus says, here's my hand. So what do we do with this faith? Oh, we'll be justified by the faith and we'll be saved. Okay. What do we do with this faith? We do the works of mercy, the corporal works of mercy. We take care of one another, the spiritual works of mercy. We pray for one another. These are the things that we do because Jesus calls us to be better people than we are every single day of our lives. Every single day to be better than we were the day before. Do we manage it? Not always. Some days we make a few steps forward, some days we fall back. Get up, dust yourself off, and try again. In the end, if we try time and time and time again to do those things Jesus asks of us, love God, love your neighbor, love one another as I have loved you, We'll make it. God, thank goodness, is not expecting perfection of us. God is expecting our attempt to become better. Please, God, let us be so. Let us stand well. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high, for the salvation of our souls, for the well-being of all the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our holy synod, for myself, your unworthy servant, for the venerable priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace throughout the world. For our civil authorities, and all in service to our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and for every city and countryside, and for those living in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, land, and space, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
that we may be all delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ, our God, to you, O Lord. Together, let us entrust our souls to God. We ask you, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that your grace be with us, forgive us our sins, and protect us. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Grant, O God, that we may please you by our good works all the days of our lives. By the help of your grace, may we always be worthy and eager to offer you glory, honor, and thanksgiving, O Lord of all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and through all ages. Amen. Let us honor the Lord our God with our substance and with the first fruits of our labor, that our barns may be filled with plenty and our presses overflow with wine. Do not neglect widows and orphans, strangers, prisoners, and the homeless. Remember the sick and the suffering. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, O God of all, for you have given us this living bread, fruit of the earth and work of our hands. Let it become the life-giving bread. Bless the lives of those who offer it and those for whom we pray. Amen. The fervor of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, water is mixed with wine and wine with water. So let these two become one in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, O God of all, for you have given us this wine, fruit of the vine, and the work of our hands. Let it become our spiritual drink, the very mystery of the body and blood which flowed from the side of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. O God, Holy, Mighty One, who accepts the sacrifice of praise from your people, accept the prayers we are about to offer for our sake and for all of creation. Grant us the grace to be a living sacrifice acceptable to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, now and forever. Amen. The noble Joseph took down your most pure body from the cross, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and with fragrant spices laid it in a new tomb. Look upon with us with favor, O God, that the walls of a new and everlasting Jerusalem may be built up, where there will be justice and peace, the Lamb and the Lion will lie down together. May the Lord wash away our sins with the hyssop of his love. May God cleanse us and heal us in the great ocean of his mercy and love. Let us love one another, that with one mind, we may confess the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence and undivided. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now confess our sins and failings with clear minds and hearts and a humble spirit, with eyes downward and hands and hearts raised. Let us ask God's mercy and let us forgive one another. Forgive us, O God. Let us rid ourselves of strife and division, hatred and hostility. Forgive us, O God. Let us receive this sacrament and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, O God. Let this Holy Communion be for our resurrection and eternal salvation for the reconciliation of all creation and for everlasting life. Amen. May the living God forgive us all of our sins and make us worthy to celebrate these holy mysteries so that we may stand as we do now before our God on that last day. May the grace, the love, and the fellowship of the living God be with us now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is among us. He is and ever shall be. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right always and everywhere to give God praise. Lord our God, what we have heard, yes, what our mothers and fathers have told us is true, and we will join with them to proclaim your glorious deeds. What our mothers and fathers declared to us, we too will declare. Throughout time you opened the doors of heaven to rain manna upon your human children, food for the journey. We will declare the glorious deeds of the Lord. Not just once in the desert, when your people groaned, that they had left behind the richness of Egypt. We will declare to the generations the wonders of the Lord. Not only when the new church struggled without the physical presence of Jesus, nor again when the persecutions made martyrs and confessors of your sons and daughters. We pledge ourselves to live the full life of discipleship. But each time to your people you provided nourishment, manna from the sky, the spirit thundering into the upper room, the witness of Paul, a prisoner of Christ, and Jesus, your own, your beloved Son, and ours, so that together with all the cloud of witnesses, our faithful ancestors, with the angels and saints, and this company, we raise our song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father, the people of Jesus' time asked him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? It is our question as well. We've heard the answer, Father. We must come to Jesus Christ in order to never be hungry and believe in him to never thirst. Jesus is with us today in the assembly of this household of faith. We call ourselves Christians, have taken that name to ourselves in faithfulness and in hope. God brought us to this holy place. We do today what has been commanded he said on the night before he died, Take, eat, this is my body which is given up for you. 
At the end of the meal he took the cup, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and drink. This is the cup of my blood given for you. He gave us bread from heaven to eat. It is your church's desire, Father, to become, in fact, the body of Christ, and not just the body, but to grow to the full stature of the Christ. So we beg you, Father, to make us strong, loving, and wise. Gift us with humility, gentleness, and patience. Father, send your Spirit upon us, one and all, now and forevermore. Make us and these gifts of wine and bread, which will nourish us into the body and blood of your own Jesus, our Savior. Inspire all of our leaders, myself, your unworthy servant, and all who serve this community. Christ is the bread of life. Strengthen the bones, tissues, and spirits of all the members of this household, that all may rightfully claim the inheritance promised and gained by Christ's death and resurrection. Whoever eats and drinks at this table will never be hungry. We remember all those who are infirm, those who are unable to be with us for whatever reason. We pray for those whose faith is moving toward maturity, Knit all of us together, Father. Make of us one in the unity of spirit, in the bond of peace. Whoever believes will never be thirsty. We give you our lives, for we want to be like the first apostles, to be prisoners in Christ. It is through him that we give these gifts. Amen. 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 The bread we break, is it not fellowship in the body of Christ? The cup we share, is it not fellowship in the blood of Christ? We who eat this bread and drink this cup shall have life everlasting. God shall raise us up on that last day. The table is furnished, the wine is poured. Let us flee from ignorance and let us proclaim the unique and powerful mystery. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of Jesse, and Son of David has prevailed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Here are God's gifts for God's people. Remember that Christ has died for us. Feed on him faithfully. Partake of this heavenly food and drink with hearts full of thanks and praise. O Christ, we are unworthy of your calling, yet in faith we share this sacred banquet. Help us always to walk in your ways. Broken and distributed is the Lamb of God, broken but not divided, ever eaten but never consumed, but sanctifying those who partake of this heavenly food. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. Accept me, O Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but like the thief will I confess you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. May the partaking of these holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. I believe, O Lord, and I confess, that this is truly your most precious body, that this is truly your life-giving blood. Make me worthy to share these holy mysteries for the remission of sins and for eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. And we worship the undivided Trinity. For the Trinity has saved us. God has filled us with spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. And has called us to share his kingdom without beginning or end. We have feasted on God's word in this holy banquet. Made bold. Let us make known our prayers and petitions for justice and peace, for the sick and the suffering, for refugees and exiles, for the lonely and prisoners, for our families and friends, for ourselves and for all of those petitions held deep in our heart and known to God alone. All these prayers we make in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives now and forever. For you are our sanctification, O God, and we glorify you now and forever unto the age of the ages. Amen. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, through the prayers of his most holy mother, and of the holy, glorious, and illustrious apostles, of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of St. Thomas, Apostle of India, and all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and full of love for us. May this worship bear fruit in our lives. May God be praised in our words and deeds. May we walk with God and be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to serve God in friend and foe, in neighbor and in stranger. In the name of the Lord. Glory to you, O Christ our God, our hope. Glory to you.